welcome to TV TV Sport and to the Mead and Skoda Arena for Brockenhurst against Portland United in the Wessex League Premier Division. Are you looking to start your child on their footballing journey and live within the Bournemouth Pool and surrounding areas? Fundamental Football Dorset puts the fun into football for toddlers through to many soccer age. With classes and football teams on weekend mornings and midweek evenings, get in touch to find out more. Next up from me will be next weekend when I'll be covering Wimborne Town against Port and Rovers in the Southern League Division 1 South. OK, let's have a look at the league tables and current form at the start of play. With just one point between the two teams, with Portland having played the game list, this looks like it's a pretty even matchup. With current form in mind, again, it's pretty tight, but Portland have the edge on that in the last six. Now let's take a look at today's runners and riders, where I'm told the Badgers have three 16-year-olds in their back four. Today's officials are referee Mark Bradley, I'll call him Uncle Mark for now, and his assistants Ashley Douse and Hugh Evans. Just a little gentle reminder, if you feel like it, you can subscribe, hit the thumbs up, comment and share. Go on, you know it makes sense. And finally, this little lady, Gemma, she's a proper long lead doggo, travelling around the grounds, taking photographs. Clever little thing. Anyway, let's get this underway. This match is brought to you by TV TV. <laughs> We had to wait until the sixth minute for the first proper chance at goal, coming courtesy of Marcus Smith. A couple of minutes later, and Uncle Mark gives a free kick right in front of the visitors' dugout. Safe to say, I don't think they agreed. I didn't think the free kick was particularly quickly taken, but the Portland defence was caught off guard and Kieran O'Donnell's square ball was unfortunately turned home by Connor Callow. Three minutes later down the other end and it's Marcus Smith again. It was a good response from Portland, creating a couple of chances since going behind. Now I'll be the first to admit I haven't seen a great deal of them, but even at these early stages it looked like they were lacking a cutting edge up front. Ah, it's a busy life. We weren't even 20 minutes in and Portland were feeling like they were getting the rough end of Uncle Mark's decisions. And on this one, I can see their point. Why not continue with the advantage that you've already played? Answers on a postcard or in the comments gratefully accepted. An incorrect answer to that question would be check the VO because we all know where that ends up, don't we? Yep, here we go. I trust that cleared it up for everyone. Anyway, what that decision did bring us is the first in a long running series of Brad Snedding Loves a Punch. By the way, Brad Snedding Loves a Punch. This, apparently, is called blending. Mm. We're just over half hour in now and Portland are still very much in the match, creating chances, but again, like I said earlier, not finding that cutting edge.
A couple of minutes on from that opportunity and the Badgers show how it's done. A long clearance from Snelling finds Kieran O'Donnell who releases Ollie Dennett. Then it finds the finish from an acute angle and runs beyond my favourite pole. After doubling their lead on the 35th minute, the hosts looked determined to put the game out of sight before half-time. Brad McGookin here trying his luck from 25 yards. Two minutes before half time, we were treated to what I would say was the move of the match. O'Donnell holding the ball up for Prescott, who delivers a beautiful cross for Speechley Price. Third goal for the Badgers on 43 men from Mitchell Speechley Price. Brad Snelling loves the punch, pass it on. We head in at half time with the Badgers very much in control and a little reminder for you to hit like and share amongst all your friends and family. They're going to absolutely love this. As we head into the second half, it's a strong fashion statement from Speechley Price. I'm not sure the matching head and wristband are going to catch on, but you know, you go for it, mate. In the second half, we had to wait seven minutes for the first opportunity. Matt Harvey just finding the side netting. Credit to Portland, they kept on pushing forward. For all the endeavour and pressing that the visitors were showing, Snelling was still yet to be properly tested. I don't know about you, but I reckon there's an element of guesswork going on here. Yeah, you know, don't you, you little tinker? Portland have been doing much of the pressing, as you can see. However, it was time for the Badgers, once again, to show the clinical nature of their finishing. It was a goal that had come from nowhere. O'Donnell runs from the halfway line and finishes nicely past Mike Edgar. Fourth goal for the Badgers on 74 minutes from Kieran O'Donnell. They may have been 4 0 down, but Portland still carried on playing their football. What with Portland attacking down that end so much, I get the chance to frequent myself with this pole again. 
Fun fact, when I was setting up, there was a woodpecker on it. His performance was impeccable. And before you roll your eyes and say that joke was bloody awful, yes it was, but I was asked to put something in by one of the match sponsors, and who am I to turn her down? You lot are absolutely blessed today. Not only am I pulling out rib ticklers from my pocket, the stadium announcer wants to get in on it too. Badgers man of the match, as chosen by our sponsors, John Ranyard and Laura Wishart, is number nine, Speechley Mitchell Price. Or even, or even, or even Mitchell Speechley Price. <laughs> If you've enjoyed today's production, please give us a thumbs up or drop us a comment. And if you really loved it, you could hit subscribe and hit the little bell, and that will tell you when I've uploaded something else. Don't worry, they don't all have jokes like today. At full time, it's a 4 0 victory for the Badgers, which tells the story of the chance conversion. This is what the table looked like at the end of play. Finally, a quick reminder, next up from me is Wimborne Town against Porton Rovers in the Southern League Division 1 South. That's next weekend. I hope you'll join me then. Music